Happy wife, happy life, happy spouse, happy house. Today I'm here to discuss all things marriage with none other than the love doctor, Sheikh Bilal Danun. How are you feeling, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, I'm a bit nervous. A bit nervous? Yeah. For those that don't know Sheikh Bilal, he's a, a marriage celebrant. You can find him on Facebook, a marriage counselor. And to my knowledge, he's also unfortunately a divorce facilitator. Now that's something we probably want to go there, but maybe not, not so soon. Yeah, we can park it for now. We can park it for park now. It. Sheikh, happy Valentine's Day. Are you serious? Yeah, we're actually releasing this on Valentine's Day. I know it's a bit awkward, but it was just a coincidence. This wasn't meant to happen, but it, are, it just are happened. Are people still celebrating this? Like, what's I, going on? I think on? it's a big thing in, in, in high schools, I guess. I think it's still happening. Everyone's trying to chase after their Valentine, trying to get that date, you know, sending them letters. I think, but it only happens in high schools. I don't... Why can't they just go through the front door and just like, um, you know, tell their parents I'm going to get married and get engaged and then, oh, you know. That's what? hard work, Sheikh. You know, unfortunately, I guess we live in a time, Sheikh, and you know very well that we live in a time where it's much easier to do the haram than to do the halal. If you want to do the haram, what does it cost you? A $20 movie ticket? Done. Dusted. Mm -hmm. You want to do the halal? It's a headache. Whatever happened to no forever. pain, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Ya Allah. <laughs> Sheikh, I wanted to actually cross something with you, which I'm unfortunately seeing happening a lot, especially in our community. We're seeing a lot of people, I guess, and it's becoming more and more prevalent where you have people that are well into their 30s and they're still not married. And I guess it's somewhat of an epidemic where people are really struggling to find halal avenues to know one another to get married. So, you know, where do we begin? Which way do we go? It's, it's, it's very difficult. Well, I think, I think this is where um, there's a number of avenues, uh, be it word of mouth, um, be it, you know, the parents actually, um, you know, reaching out um, to relatives, to, um, you know, heads of organisations or centres or friends or, you know, word of mouth, mouth is one avenue. But look, people, um, you know, meet at uni, people meet at work, people meet, um, you know, at... Um, just stop so, you there, sorts just of to stop you there, Sheikh. Yeah. Meet at uni. Yes. You know, this is like the biggest taboo, right? Like meeting a girl at uni, like this is, it's got like a hundred red lights stuck on it right now. Okay. Like how can you speak to another girl at uni? Like how do you manage like not to fall in haram, but at the same time to keep it halal. Why like can't you? Why can't you just go up to her and say, "Hey, can I have your Wally's phone number?" That's a bit awkward. Don't you think? <laughs> Is that really going to work? You I don't walk know up what to the youth girl, hey, today can I have like, your Wally's number. Well, you know, I mean, if they're happy to ask for their phone number, what's wrong with asking for the Wally's phone number? Yeah. Well, look, you, of course, let's keep it real. Yeah. I mean, you can always go through the um, the friend, you know, the friend of a friend, and say, "Hey, you know, are you looking at getting married? Um, there's somebody who's yeah. interested in meeting you." you and would like to maybe come and pay your family a visit i mean visiting a family just visiting to get to know the girl mm. isn't commitment it's just a question so what are the boundaries when it comes to this what exactly are the boundaries because you're going to want to have to have seen something before so what are the boundaries when it comes to i guess not necessarily interacting with the girl but knowing that she's the right girl from you so like observing from a, I'm not saying stalking or <laughs> anything <laughs> like that, but like, ha, like you want to know if she's a good girl, right? So what are the boundaries when it comes to this? We've well, got to do your due diligence. You want to make sure that you're attracted to the person. Yeah, there's yeah. no point um, knocking on the door if there's no attraction. Yeah. Or if you don't even know how she looks, how, right? Yeah, yeah, you don't know how she looks like. Someone's got to point her out. Because mm. um, that might potentially actually... It, it can cause more damage. Correct. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it can damage her, it, and and it may make it very disheartening for him. Yeah. So yeah. definitely, um, you know, uh, attraction is very important. And, and and when I say attraction, we're not talking about you know Mr. or Mrs. Universe here. We're yeah, talking yeah. about you know there's got to be some you know chemistry there because yeah. one thing you can't manipulate chemistry. If you're not yeah. attracted, well, then, you know, there's no point moving yeah. forward. But the problem is the brothers. They want you know I don't want to mention their names, <laughs> but they want like an A-list. Hollywood celebrity, 
Mm -hmm. They want, you know, they're shooting so high. Mm. I think just... And th that's, that's on the deen, right? She's an A-list yeah, celebrity. Then, and then she has the deen. deen of Maryam, alayhi salam. Like and, yeah, yeah. It's well, that's, just, that's called Hur al-Ain, Habibi. Yeah, yeah. It's not <laughs> happening today, brother. It's uh, not happening today. I, I think, um, you know, uh, asking... And once you've moved beyond the attraction, you know, you know what, I'm attracted to this person. Um, then, you know, getting to know that person through the front door, asking, you know, all the questions. And I think if a person is looking for a Maryam, you know, or for a, you know, this uh, example that you gave of a, um, you know. Pious wali of Allah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then, then, you know, the person has to ask themselves, are they themselves mm. the type of person that this pious, um, you know, female is actually also looking for? Yeah, yeah. So it works both ways. Yeah, he needs to look after himself and he also needs to look after his deen. Like, there's no point in like, because you could potentially ruin her life. And we see this so often, Sheikh. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, like, women of Allah, like, they're women of Allah. They're, they're servants of Allah, probably reading Quran, memorize the Quran. And then she married to someone who's like, pray, misses a few prayers here and there. He damages her. Like, all right, they, you know, you're, you, you got married, but then they, you damaged her. And there's, I guess there's that stigma, oh, you know, she's going to change him or he's going to change her. And I don't feel like that happens. Am mm -hmm. I right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, absolutely. And w let's always go back to basic. Let's go, always go back to the time of the Prophet Sallallahu And the Prophet Sallallahu spoke about what to look for when it comes to a suitor. Yeah. And that is, he said, <laughs> That if the suitor comes to you, you're happy with their deen and their mannerisms, mm -hmm. their akhlaq. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, give your daughter in marriage to this man. And if you don't do so, if we have this epidemic um, of not doing that, then there's going to be a, a fitna there's going to be you know a fitna on this earth and then so so deen is important so we spoke about looks um mm. the deen is important and not only the deen but the manners there are there are, there are brothers out there who have deen but they're really manners hot tempered are, yeah. you know angry angry um you know their fuse blows real quickly mm. you know and then when it comes to the to the sisters Okay, let's see what the Prophet Sallallahu said. Um, in one hadith, he says, yeah, a woman is married for, you know, for her beauty, uh, for her lineage, um, you know, for her wealth and for her deen. And he said, go for the one that has the deen and you will prosper. Um, mm. Does that mean they're the only four things um, that we look at? No, there are other things and there are other hadith that support um, looking at the woman and ensuring that you're attracted to her. Mm. So what comes first? The, uh, I, I believe attraction comes first. Attraction comes yes. first. Why? Yeah. Why is that? What's the point in talking about the dean mm -hmm. if you're not attracted? Yeah. Are, are you with me? Yeah, yeah. Like because if you if we put dean first, then and then we put attraction, mm. and then you say, all right, I've accepted her dean, and then the attraction comes in, you put across. It's like you've just knocked you've off. You've undermined the dean, the dean, dean a bit. Yeah, yeah. Does that I, make I sense? Guess what you're it sounds as though what dean comes first, first brother. You know, mm. but I think we need to look at it. Well, I, is there an attraction there? Mm. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm attracted. All right, mm. now let's let's get let's get down to business. Mm -mm. There's no no need to get down to business if I'm not attracted in the first instance. Mm. Okay, and I'll, I'll be honest with you that there have been many brothers who've married um, for the sake of din and not being attracted, and unfortunately, um, I've come across several cases where they've had to get a divorce yeah. and even after children because they realised they were just never attracted. They were just um, that's very Putting sad. That's very sad that mm. you say that, Sheikh. And it actually comes back to the purpose of marriage. You know, alhamdulillah, in my you know brief studies, we went through the purposes of marriages. And one of the purposes of marriage is whether we like to admit it or not, it's actually to protect the brother, you know, or protect the sister. So, if this woman, you know, he he finds that solace by living with her, he's gonna be protected from his you know falling into sin. He won't be easily manipulated, you know, by an attractive. Op uh, you know, member of the opposite gender or anything like that because he has that solace in his heart, you know, I'm, I'm all sweet, you know, mm. and she's mm. protected and she's safeguarded mm. that aspect of his deen from protecting him from falling into sin. So I guess it is very important. But at the same time, we never, ever want to undermine the importance of deen. Absolutely. And you've the way you've packaged it and the way mm. you've just said it about protection mm. and you, you reminded me of a cover. Right, yeah. and let's go back to the Quran. Mm. And we go back to the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al Baqarah, He says, "Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun yeah. lahun." Uh, the woman is like libas, a garment for yeah, you. Yeah. 
the yeah. husband and you the husband are like a garment yeah. for her. If you think about your garments for a moment, they're actually the closest thing to your body. The relationship between a husband and wife should always be intimate and close. If you think about your garments, they give you confidence, they mm. give you warmth, they give you protection, right? And yeah. this is how the relationship should ongoingly be between a man and a woman. If you're not prepared to be a garment for him and he's not being not prepared to be a garment for you, then yeah. you need to reconsider. SubhanAllah. I think another thing um, many people underestimate when they get married, it's um, understanding that a woman is not like a man. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says it in the Quran, he says, you know, a man is not like a woman. And despite the, you know, the battling theories and debates we're seeing played out in today's discourse, our dean says, you know, a man is not the same as a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, we're different. So what we have to understand here um, are roles and differences, okay? Mm. So let's talk about differences, okay? And the male is not like the female the Almighty has said, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? It means we're different psychologically, mm -hmm. biologically, neurologically, physiologically, our perception um, and how we perceive the world. Um, so there are clear-cut differences. I'll give a very classical example, the Olympic Games. Yeah. Right. At the Olympic Games, males compete against males. Mm -hmm. Females compete against females. But this why? is a uh, sexist Sheikh. No, no, but why are they doing I'm that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But why are they doing that? Because physiologically, biologically speaking, physically, there's there's differences that we have to admit. We, we have, have to admit. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And and so definitely um, in the same thing when it comes to relationships, we have to understand that we have these differences. So let's give a, let's give a classical example when it comes to relationships. Um, let, I'm going to test you out a little bit here, okay? Sure. Not on camera, so, <laughs> What is this? So, you didn't agree uh, <laughs> to this, guys. Yeah? So let's say, for example... I'm not, just to clarify, I'm not like a... like. Perfect uh, husband, or just but just anyway. We, we want you to get very want, close yeah, enough, inshallah, yeah. ta'ala, yeah. um, because good marriages keep us happier and healthier, no. right? Well, that's actually true. That we want to be happy in our that's marriages, true. right? That's true. So, inshallah, um, if you're having a fallout with your spouse, right? Yeah. And what do you think the first thing that your wife wants to do is talk about the problem or walk away from the problem? What do you think she sure. wants to do? Does she want to talk about it or does she want to walk away? Um, I don't think they would want to talk about the problem. They I don't, don't want to talk I, about I don't it. Think, I don't think they want to talk about the problem. So they, there's an actual problem. You think they're just happy to go to sleep and they'll have a good night's sleep and then um, everything will be fine. They'll reboot in the morning. I think they want the problem to be solved, but they don't really want to talk about it. I don't know. I could be wrong. That's here. right. They yeah. do want the problem to yeah. be solved. And hence, they do want to deal with the problem. Yeah. Right? Men, on the other hand, they want to go into their um, you man know, cave, their, man cave yeah. their, their bubble. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, you know, we're like real thin Males are, are thinkers, right? Mm. We just want to think about the problem. Yeah. We want to give it a lot of thought. Hence, we have, um, you know, that, that statue, Rodin's Thinker. Have you seen that yeah, guy yeah, that's just doing, like, doing oh, those yeah. guys, you know? Um, so that's what we are, we're, we're like. And that's because males, they like to sort of dissect the problem. Um, you, know, what, you know, what do they say about a man's brain versus a female's brain? Uh, I think we're going to have to cut this conversation here. What's this is going very, on? I think we're borderline... Uh, no, 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 yeah, no, no. This is what this is what the research is All right, saying. Good, good, good. No, research, guys. This is chill the out. This is you got me. YouTube comments and, and people that are crazy on <laughs> ready to. Anyways, continue. Well, you know they're saying that the brain, the bra you know the brains, the, the the brain of a man is wired in such a way that it's compartmentalized, where it's like in mm. boxes and files. Everything's got a, a place. Very intelligent. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, that might be a little yeah. bit. Um, you have to, I think you might have to edit that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th the, the, they say the woman's uh, brain is like a ball of wires whereby everything is connected, right? Um, that's just the way they're created. I mean, you know, uh, and, and, and hence we have not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, has said the male is not like the female, mm. but then you, come, you have authors like Dr. John Gray, mm. who says men are from Mars, mm. women are from Venus, Venus, right? And then we have like, for example, another book that's out there that talks about gender differences. Um, and that is why men don't listen and women can't read maps. Yeah. Okay. What are they trying to say here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so we, we, we are different. Okay. Mm. And, and if we're going to compete against that, then we're going to find life is going to be a struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay. We all know that, you know, um, a woman, for example, the wife, her primary need is love, mm. right? 
a man also needs love, but he he enjoys that respect. He likes totally. to feel that he's in control because he likes to give. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. And if he's giving, right? If he's actually giving, and the woman uh, and and the woman and his wife, yeah. Okay, is reciprocating with appreciation. He wants to give even more. That's right. Okay. Now, when you're not giving to the wife. She's mm. not going to reciprocate. And then this is where the problem is going to also start. 100%. So definitely males and females are different and we need to understand each other's differences and mm. work with each other's differences and not downplay, undermine, water down these 100%, differences. 100% because even the way I see it, right, it's like the woman has qualities that the man might not necessarily have. And the man might have qualities that the woman doesn't necessarily have. And this doesn't mean one's better than the other. That's just like childish behavior. When That's we start competing speaking like against that. each other. We don't speak like mm. that, right? But when we look at the qualities that a woman has, the man loves that. He desires that. Like for instance, and I'm generalizing and I know I'm generalizing and I don't want anyone to get triggered. But like a woman has that lutf, she has that gentleness, that sensitivity and a man might have that strength and, and as again, I'm generalizing, but I think it's fine. To, a man is, he has that physical strength. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had the strength of like 30, 40 men. But you see like, and one of the most amazing things that, I, that, that you see in the seerah is, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's so strong. He's, he's physically strong, you know. Um, but when Angel Jibril comes to him and shakes him for the first time, and this is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man of such immense strength, He's shaken up by that, you know, but despite his strength, despite his stature, the first person he comes back to is who? Khadija. Khadija radiallahu anha. anha. And he, he, he longs for that, that lutf, that, that solace, that gentleness that is only found in a woman, that is only found in a woman. You know, you could go to one of your mates, help me out, but you seek that, that, that warmth that is only found in a woman. So it's, it's so beautiful, Allah, it's, it's so beautiful. It's such a, an amazing uh, characteristic that a woman has. But it's like, look how we look, work off one another. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look how we work off one another. And we're always there by our sides, compliment. You know, you said at the start, Hunna libasun lakum, antum libasun lahun. You know, you, you cover her, she covers you. Mm. But we're like complimenting one another. Yeah, not competing. And, and it's not competing. Like we, we, we see in, in, in today's discourse, the battle of the sexes. Yeah. Get out of here. This is mm. not Islam. Like mm. when it comes mm. to Islam, we're speaking about, you know, how we, uh, what does it say in the Quran? Uh, the, the verse where it says, ba'dhum awliya You know, yes, the, yes. The, the man and the believing man and the believing, believing woman, woman. They're, mm. they're looking after one another. Mm. Awliya they're, mm. they're, they're, they're protecting one another. There's mm. no battle of the sexes. We, mm. we complement one another. That's right. And I want to give another uh, mm. example of this. I mean, we hear the verse, ala yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that men, are the maintainers, yeah. the caregivers of women, yeah. right? And you know, and then um, you know, there in 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 the verse there is you know uh, you know that men have a level or a degree, you know, one degree over them over the women. Mm. And then some people would get very like you know, again we have yeah. certain movements that oh, may yeah. say you know what's going on here, okay? But we know in any business mm. in any corporation there's got to be somebody who has the final say mm. or somebody who has and it's not a dictatorship and i think i don't want to mis mistaken mm. this leadership role to dictatorship yeah, yeah. and i think we need to, the, the 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 example i like to give is that of the pilot so when it comes to flying a plane we have the pilot and mm. we have the co-pilot mm, mm, mm. okay and that's how i think we need to look at it between the husband and the wife that the husband is like that pilot who's navigating this vehicle mm. um you know this plane in this instance okay um who's navigating the relationship overseeing things okay um and the co-pilot is there as well um you know supporting mm. helping but when the pilot is not feeling down is feeling down or can't really be performing at their best the co-pilot kicks in yeah okay or if we want to look at it like the head and the neck so so yes the husband is the head and the wife is the neck but the head only goes where the neck goes yeah yeah it's even that like <laughs> like have that shura have that you know consult with one another before you make decisions like it's not like a, a dictatorship and, and 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 really whoever's made it out like that completely misconstrued because even if you look at that very verse the most amazing thing about that verse in particular when it says at the very end of the verse what does it say كَانَ عَلِيًّا كَبِيرًا you know despite all right yes you have this authority 
but ultimately who's the authority for in Allah you know mm. Allah he is the almighty he is Absolutely. the grand he is the great mm. so it's like whoever wants to take it at that way you know you've completely misconstrued it because the man yes all right he has this authority here you know this uh, this amir ship where, whereby he he's making a few decisions but at the end of the day you know who's he responsible to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's not like i remember one sheikh he was saying the other time he's like this should scare you this verse Mm. This shouldn't fill you up with pride. Look at me, mm. macho man. Mm. Because this verse should scare you. Mm. Because every responsibility is a mas'uliyah. It's, it's you're going to be asked about it. You know. So why are you, you know, boasting about this and walking so proud and and boastful upon this earth? No, just chill out. You know, you're going to be asked about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So it is a it is a task that we need to, I guess, understand and and recalibrate within our minds. Um, I also understand that. You're very heavily involved in marriages themselves, right? We see you all the time on Facebook, you know, posting a photo here with the, mm, with the latest mm. guy that got married. Every week, I think we, I see you on my, on my newsfeed uh, taking a photo with a new guy that got married. Now, yeah, they think that I'm getting married to him oh in God, some countries no. because they say, where's the bride? So I hope oh. you're not one of those people oh, who, no. thought, who thought that. Uh, no, 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 of course not. Chef, come, come on, I've, no, I've just, known you for, no, no. for, for so long. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, I feel like you're someone who's, I guess, heavily, you, you get invited to probably weddings every second week, right? Alhamdulillah. Or maybe every week if, if, if it's not at that. Now, when it comes to weddings, I guess a lot has been said about where weddings go wrong, mm -hmm. you know, when, when extravagant, spending too much money, people are, you know, you're, you're feeding people and they're only going home to backbite about how bad your wedding was and how tight her dress was and, and who this man was and everyone was just not happy. And we feel like that's because there was a removal of baraka from the wedding. But I actually wanted to, to cross something by you, Sheikh, that when it comes to a wedding, you know, there's so much that has been said about weddings that lack barakah. But I personally believe a wedding, you know, when it's done right, it's not only halal and permissible, but to the contrary, it's mubarak. It's a place of, of barakah. It's a place where Allah's love descends, a place where perhaps even the angels are in attendance. And I feel like many of us have misunderstood the importance of this event. Well said, yes. And like, as you said, it, it is about barakah. It is about um, starting your relationship, commencing this relationship on a good footing, on good foundation. You don't want to be, I mean, this is the first chapter. Mm, We're mm. talking about chapter one of your marital life. Yeah. Um, post, you know, engagement life. You're, you're starting this chapter through a wedding, okay, or as we call it in Islam, a walima, mm, mm, which mm. is a wedding feast. Okay, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he did recommend a walima or a wedding yeah. feast to celebrate, to to publicize. You know, none of this, um, you know, secret marriages. We publicize yeah, yeah. marriages. No secret marriage, yeah. Okay, <laughs> we we publicize marriages, guys. Yeah. You know, we don't do things uh, on 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 the get on the low. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, and then you know when you're there. There is a sunnah. Like for example, what does what did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam teach us to say to the newlyweds? And that's why you would invite righteous people as well to make du'a for your marriage. Barakallahu lakuma wa baraka alaykuma wa jama'a baynakuma fi khayr. There's actually a song about that. That's right. Yeah, that's no, right. Can I sing it we now? Should cut it. We should no? cut. cut. <laughs> yeah, anyways, cut yeah. um, so I think. Uh, you know, it, it's all about the barakah. You mm. know, we want the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want his uh, we want his input. We want him to to really infuse our relationships with barakah. Um, he's the turner of the hearts. Mm. He is the one that can turn the heart of your spouse mm. towards you or against you or away from you. Mm. He's going to place barakah in your wealth, in the home that you're going to live with in you know in your children so definitely definitely let's really rethink that special day the or the special you know um, occasion the wedding ceremony and let's ensure that we're doing things in a halal way mm, mm. like mm, to, to mm. be honest with me like my my wedding day i would have to say it was like it was one of like i f i felt like it was i'm not trying to say i'm, I'm pious right but i i could sense the barakah there 
like mm-hmm. and it was just like a beautiful beautiful like the billah from no one has had anything stay away Allah like, barik Allah Allah barik. <laughs> but like you can feel there's barakah there as long as you just do it halal right no no don't, don't no mixing no no dancing with opposite gender just keep it halal keep it you know according to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and wallahi you'll see like it's a beautiful day absolutely it's a absolute mubarak day a beautiful day and not to mention that this is a sunnah Yani yes, yes. We, we, we're, we're so tired of hearing people say, you know, oh, haram weddings, haram weddings. What about halal weddings? When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he, he says one of the rights, you know, whoever's invited to alima should attend. Should attend. Mm, so, mm. Yani, like, this is like, if not an obligation, like many, many of the ulama actually say it is an obligation Correct. to attend. It's, it's from the, the rights of, of a Muslim yeah. upon a Muslim. So let's like honor this day and, and really understand the, the, the blessing this this day is because wallahi you know i, I think there's a hadith for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says and, and correct me if i'm wrong he says one of the best things you can be given in this dunya after iman is a is a righteous wife is, is that a hadith there, there is a hadith khayrun nisa'i man tasurruka idha absart that the best of women is the one who brings happiness to you Sorry. when you look at her and of course you look at her righteousness mm. um and you look at her upright character uh, ad dunya mata' وَخَيْرُ مَتَاعِ الدُّنْيَا الْمَرْأَةُ الصَّالِحَةُ oh, wow. That's the hadith that, that, you're referring it, yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah. So this world is a place of, of amusement, of joy. Mm. We can still enjoy yeah. and have entertainment in this worldly yeah. life. Okay. He said one of the greatest joys is to have a righteous wife. Subhanallah. <clears throat> so every every wife should really ensure that um, that she is that righteous, pious wife. That adds beauty to the marriage. That adds barakah to the mm. marriage mm. and solidifies and really crystallizes that relationship mm. between the husband and the wife. Well, and I feel like, you know, one of the most important things that when you do get married is just constantly strive to, to be a better person for your wife. Or, or for your wife to constantly strive to be a better wife, the husband to constantly strive to be a better husband, and you know it's all it all comes back to what ihsan, you know, Ihsan'd. always just striving for excellence. You know, I, I went to one sheikh once, uh, regretted, regrettedly, and I said to the sheikh, you know, uh, like I've already done like the rights responsibilities, but I just wanted a bit of a like a, a clarification on one of the rights. He stops, he looks at me, and he says, "Come sit down." He goes. Uh, why are you asking about this? I said, I just want to know like the, the, the detail about this this certain right, uh, this certain responsibility. No one get any ideas. That, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no one get any ideas. But he goes, all right. He goes, do you think that your marriage is going to be successful over implementing this right and, and her fulfilling this responsibility and, and this right? He goes, marriage isn't about rights and responsibilities. He says, if you want a successful relationship, there needs to be ihsan. There needs to be a point where you don't even ask what are your rights and responsibilities because not only are they already fulfilled, but you, they're, 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 they're way back in the distance. You only ever talk about rights and responsibilities when it's long gone, hmm. when, it, when it's approaching divorce. I you like how, how you've used the word ihsan and, mm. and you've mentioned you know, perfection and really this is what a Muslim should always be striving to do, ihsan, uh, perfection. And subhanallah, وَمَا جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ And the reward of ihsan is nothing but ihsan, of mm. goodness. So um, subhanallah, when you do have a fallout with your spouse, it's very important that you apply ahsan, mm. okay, ahsan towards the situation. And when we look at the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, idfa' billati hiya ahsan. That means repel. If something's coming your way, be it from your spouse, a friend, um, anybody that's coming your way, and it's negative, okay? And he's, Allah says, repel it with ahsan, with better. Mm-hmm. So we have a duty as Muslims not to, not to basically put out fires with fires, okay? Mm. But to put them out with you know, that which is better. Mm. So he says, Allah says, إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ Right? And then he says, فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةً You will find mm. between um, between you and whom there is some enmity Mm-mm. and animosity. كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ Hamim, mm. You become as if you're close friends, you're close buddies again. Wow. You know what the scholars said? They said that if you don't find yourself becoming close to that person, that's your fault because you, you didn't apply 
ahsan. Wow. You didn't apply ihsan. Subhanallah. Okay. So because Allah is telling you, mm. Allah is telling us that the outcome of ihsan is that you come together. Subhanallah. And so really we need to be ensuring that we are applying ihsan, that which you know. is best. And look, marriages are always a work in progress. Yeah, a roller coaster. It, it is a some. roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. It's a crazy eight. You're mm. gonna have like you know, uh, you know, it's it's good over here. Then it gets a little bit. Look, relationships go through a cycle. Mm. They go through um, a um, where a period of where there's sort of ease. The honeymoon phase. Okay. Well, no, just generally, yeah. I'm talking. I'm talking oh, in beyond general, yeah, in yeah. beyond honeymoon. Okay. Beyond honeymoon, you know, really, um, it, it will take about. By the way, for those who are about to get married. Or just got gotten married. This is one for them. Uh, it takes about a year and a half to two years to really find your, you know, that sweet spot, or to mm. really find your feet. And then you get in kids. Marriage. And then you get kids. And then, and and then you back come in. But, but but as funny as that sounds, yeah. that can be quite challenging in and of itself because they do say if you don't have a plan for when you have kids if you're not good at managing you know mm. we time and me time and or us time and you know that quality time together and kids come into mm. the equation it really complicates yeah. things right so i think um you know it's really important to to understand that relationships go through um a cycle so they go through where things um are, are quite good you know and then they get a little bit unsettled and then there's a repair period and yeah. then they get settled unsettled yeah. repair wow. and that's an ongoing thing with relationships can I, uh, can I just stop you there i'm so sorry to stop you but it's just that what you've just said is so true and it's it's for almost every couple i come across it's so true you know, they fight, repair, fight, repair. And one of the most incredible things for me when it comes to marriages, and I'm, and I'm generalizing again, I'm sure this is, you know, but majority of the time I feel like the ease at which problems get fixed in a marriage, I, I personally believe it's an ayah. You know what I mean? Ayah to he, see how Allah says it's a, it's a miracle. Mm. I, I, I feel like it's a miracle because had I had problems with anyone else, I'll be bitter for at least two years. You have a problem with anyone else, that fight will last forever. But with your wife, with your spouse, like you, you have a problem, a mm -hmm. day, maybe not even a day, like yeah. two hours, and then you're best friends again. Mm -hmm. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're, you go through that, that hardship, oh, you are, I'm so angry, but then like after a few minutes, half an hour, best of friends ever. And it doesn't happen with anyone else. No other relationship that perhaps you find your mother, Perhaps yeah, your mother, perhaps your mother, but no one else. And it's just like an ayah, a, a beautiful sign. Allah yeah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's created within that, that relationship, that bond, mm. subhanAllah. And now, Sheikh, we've all seen you as the marriage celebrant on Facebook and, and you know, the photos and everyone knows you as the marriage celebrant. But what I know personally from you is that you actually behind the scenes are dealing with a lot of divorces. Now, how bad is this problem within our community, so to speak? It, it is quite uh, problematic. Um, I want to say from the outset that when it comes to divorce, talaq, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated it, he legislated it as a solution to a problem. So I think one thing that we shouldn't misunderstand about divorce is that divorce in and of itself is a problem okay of course it's a solution to a problem and it's one of the very last options mm -hmm. that we should go to what disheartens me about many of the cases that come to me is not so much that well well so much that um that basically they haven't the couple really haven't probably thought about counseling Okay, mm -hmm. to try and save their marriage. Okay, um, so I think definitely, as always, as a first option, I do believe that couples who are doing it tough then they just can't seem to come to an agreement, um, then they really should consider um, counseling. Okay, through somebody um, who is quite experienced when it comes to relationships and offering um, strategies um, and options. Um, for the couple to really consider moving forward. And not just go to anyone. No, because, you know, the person really should be very well versed. Um, I like to have an approach whereby I'm sort of thinking about, um, you know, the psychological um, and the spiritual aspects of, uh, of relationships, not just the Islamic part mm -hmm. of a relationship. So somebody who understands human behavior, who understands 
the difference between a male and a female that understands the context, that understands the culture, mm. that understands the dean. I think that's the sort of approach that I personally yeah, I take to when couples come and see me. Sheikh, how long have you been doing this for? Specifically, the, the marriage counseling and divorce facilitation. Uh, probably a good 15 years. Allah, that's probably a, that's a, a long good 15 time. years. Okay. And, wow. And yeah, so it is, it is quite disheartening. I want to give you an example, mm. right? So, um, look, you know, we cannot paint all divorce cases with the same brush. They, are, can, they, they can be quite unique. Uh, subhanallah, only driving here today, I had a phone call literally probably 10 minutes before arriving here. And uh, so we had a case whereby the couple uh, came in for counseling, but the, uh, the woman was that's it, checked out um, and she insisted that it's over. And I, I felt that it wasn't. I really felt that the, 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 the husband is remorseful about certain things that there he's done. Hope. There was hope. I really felt that, you know, and I really wanted this relationship, especially that there's a child involved. I really wanted them to give it a go. So anyway, cutting a long story short, um, we had a session, we had a, a second session. And by the end of the second session, we didn't, we, we didn't, I didn't have the outcome that I wanted. Right. So she insisted on the divorce. Basically, we did. We processed the divorce. Um, only a, a couple of weeks later, which is now today. Oh, no. OK. The brother's calling me up saying, hey, my wife has called me. She's really, really down. She's oh, stressed no. out. She's regretful. And he's almost checked out because he said, look, if I sign that line, I'm not coming back. So when he's contacted me, I said, Alhamdulillah, let's make it work. Let's oh, no. let's let's go with this now. You know, and. The good news for them is their divorce is reversible. So there are divorces that are irreversible. Yeah. Well, yeah. they are, but they, they, I mean, they can be reversed, but with much complication and some that can be reversed quite easily. Oh. We won't go into the thick of that. Yeah. So I'm really excited to be able to, to, that I'm going to sit with this couple very, very soon and discuss strategy and options and uh, moving forward because now she's in a better headspace. Sometimes we're not in our right headspace. And you know what's unfortunate, Brother Kamal, yeah. is that we often make a permanent decision from a temporary situation, right? We don't want to make permanent decisions from, you know, a temporary situation when we're at the cycle of, um, you know, unsettlement, mm -hmm. you know, when we're unsettled, where mm. there's still hope for repair, mm. okay? And we've exercised all, um, all avenues. And wow. I think where a lot of couples are getting it wrong, and I see this a lot, I'll be honest with you, Wallahi, Allah is my witness, okay? I see couples that come to me for divorce, and then I say to them, have you thought about this? Have you thought about this option? Do you want to try this out? You've tried it your way. And it, things are not working out. Do you mind trying it my way? I want to share it's something fine. with you. They say, look, you know what? Do you have anything to lose? Well, not really, you know. And then, okay, try this out. And so I had a couple who did that once. And I, uh, I remember they specifically came in for divorce, right? Or it was really ugly. And then I sent them off. And, you know, you can't keep track all the time mentally. So you get the booking and you remember there's that couple that's coming in. And I really thought they were coming in for divorce this time, right? And they came in and they sat down and I'm, I get really nervous for these people, to be honest with you, you know, because there's children involved. Um, and most of these cases are salvageable. We can save them, mm -hmm. right? And so subhanAllah, um, I said to them, so why are you here today? You know, and they go, I want to thank you. Oh, I said, Allahu Akbar, what are you thanking me for? Uh, look, and alhamdulillah, our relationship is a lot better. We've applied some of those strategies and they're working, you wow. know. Um, we, we have a better understanding. There's more communication, okay. Um, there's some compromise happening. There's more deen. Alhamdulillah. Okay. That's a beautiful so, day. so what we're saying here is that before we get to the D word, okay, yeah. before, <laughs> before we get there, really, have you have you considered the C word? You know, the counselling. And I think this is where I would love to see a lot of couples really, um, you know, put put up their hand and say, "Hey, we need help." Being I mean, proactive. Be proactive. Yeah. I mean, look, when it comes to physical ailments and disease and illness, right? Mm. We straight away think about going to the doctor, mm. right? Why don't we? Why are we not thinking that way? You know, um, when it comes to um, our emotional, um, you know, emotional pain or um, you know, our relationship pain, you know. So I think this is where we really need to, to create more awareness, and um, inshallah, in 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 mm. in saving marriages, inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. And and just personally, Misha, I just want to say 
like you're doing a service like to the community man Allah reward you because you know healing marriages healing relationships it's stressful I could imagine it could be very stressful for you but the reward in just mending those ties you know probably through the roof so may Allah reward you for that <laughs> Sheikh you've said that you've been doing this for 15 years what are some of the most common reasons you see that you know, unfortunately, divorce unfolds. What are the, the the primary suspects for this? Okay, that's a very good question, a loaded question, um, but nevertheless, it's one that is asked a lot of the mm. time. You know, um, so I guess it, um, what I've what I've noticed is there isn't really one um, one you know one main reason. Of mm. course, people have several reasons. Um, if I had to package the several reasons, be it um, you know communication issues, be it uh, disrespect, be mm. it abuse, uh, be it family interference, um, be intimacy related, financial related, um, be it uh, controlling behavior, and the list goes on, right? Um, being, be it no baraka in, in the, in, in the relationship because there's no prayer. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, the first question that I ask couples is, tell me about your relationship with Allah. Because you see, as the pious people of the past, they said, repair your relationship with the creator and he will repair the relationship with the creation. So there is a very strong uh, connection or there is a, uh, a, there, there's a very, um, you know, there's a correlation between our relationship with Allah and our relationship with each other. Okay. And you will find, subhanAllah, that most of the time there's a lacking in the relationship with Allah. So one of my, um, you know, key advice to listeners, to viewers is definitely begin with the foundation. Begin by repairing your relationship with Allah. So Allah can give you those epiphany moments. So Allah can give you those light bulb moments on how to fix your marriage for God's sake. Right. So start with Allah Azza wa Jal first. Right. Going back to the pa to packaging you know, a lot of these problems, apart from, you know, the deen, um, it comes back down to, I believe, failed expectations. So a husband and a wife have expectations of each other, have expectations of how my significant other, okay, is going to be, um, you know, meeting my needs. And my needs could be emotional, could be physical, could be social, could be financial, mm. right? We have all of these needs, mm, mm, mm. right? So now, um, so I have an expectation of my other half, right? Now, when that expectation does not come to fruition, there's going to be disappointment. Disappointment. Mm. When disappointment kicks in, there's frustration, there's resentment, there's anger, um, there is anxiety, there is extreme anxiety called depression, and it sort of leads on to these things, right? The key here is to really be communicating your expectations. Darling, honey, Buttercup, whatever you call, you know, each other. Take notes, boys. Take notes. <laughs> Buttercup. <laughs> you like that one? Probably <laughs> not. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're, when you're talking to each other, you know, what are your expectations? What do you want? You know, and you need, you need to know what you want first. That's, that's so because, true. Because, yani, subhanallah, if you don't know what you want, you will get what you don't, don't want. want no. Okay. So, yes. It's about ek failed expectations. And subhanAllah, at the heart of much of these disappointments and frustrations, we find failed expectations. But I want him to do this. I want her to do that. I expect this. Mm. I didn't expect that. But there was no communication. There was no communication. Mm. Okay. Um, or, for example, there's no boundaries. Okay. Um, where's your standards? Where's your values? What are your boundaries? Okay. Where have you crossed the line? Um, and so again, this is why I highly recommend that relate that couples um, who are about to get married or, or who have just gotten married to really learn about relationships, to learn about human behavior, um, to learn about how to deal with your in-laws, aka outlaws, uh, <laughs> aka yeah. bother-in-laws. You know, with all and it's sometimes it's not personal. There's just something about this relationship in-laws um you know and 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 the daughter-in-law you know i get i get a lot of couples coming in whereby there's serious clashes with 
with the family, you know, with the, with the in-laws. And this is where boundaries come in, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of contributors towards um, divorce. But if I, if I had to bring it down to and just put them in probably uh, two broad headings, maybe it's the dean. Or maybe there is dean, but there's no communication about expectations. Or maybe there is communication about expectations, That's but you're not taking each other's expectations very seriously. Mm, mm. Okay, and hence we find ourselves um, in toxic uh, marriages. And in that case, there would be times when I guess divorce would be one of the playing cards. But at the end of the day, we want to avoid it as much as possible. But when it does become toxic. I guess, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, leave your toxic husband, leave your toxic wife. You know, I think first, uh, perhaps verify whether... Absolutely, that, yeah. that, that indeed there is toxicity. That, um, and we don't, we don't just, um, you know, straight away um, take on these labels and that's it, call it a day. No, no, no. Yeah. Get, you know, you don't just chop off your arm if you've got a bit of cancer in it. You, you do everything to save it, right? Mm. You just would do absolutely everything to save it. You will see the specialist. You'll pay the money, okay? You will take time out. You will do the research. Why is relationships different? Okay, relationships are very sacred. It's a serious contract. It's a you know you know when I do these marriage contracts, you know you have the wali, you have the witnesses, you have the Something, mahar. It's a big deal. It's serious. You have yeah. uh, you've spent a lot of money. It's a big deal, right? and especially when there's uh, there's children involved. Okay, so we need to really, inshallah, be investing in um, one of the most important relationships on earth, and that is the relationship between a husband and a wife. Subhanallah, so, Shaykh, I guess it, it all comes back to that one verse in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In yurida islaha, you know, if, if, if you want, if you want that, that reconciliation, Allah will fix it, Allah will mend the heart. So I guess it's oh that, that strong desire to have to fix and mend things. And now look, um, I just want to make something perfectly clear. I'm, I, I don't know much about marriage. And I feel like there's so much more I want to know. And looking at you, you've been in this for 15 years. What's one thing that people like me and all those around that need to know about marriage, but they don't know yet? What's one thing we need to know about marriage that we don't know? Why are you asking me such a hard Sheikh, question? 15 years. Tayyip, khalas, bismillah, years. bismillah. Um, one thing I can say is good marriages keep us happier and healthier. Full stop. Subhanallah. Because you see, um, marriages or the, 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 the quality of your marriage is going to have a ripple effect. It's going to impact your physical health. It's going to impact your mental health. It's going to impact your resilience to feel better or it compromises your immunity when you're feeling down, okay? It impacts your relationship with the children. It impacts your productivity at work. Much productivity at work is lost. Something like, I think I remember reading a statistic of about 40 odd percent wow. of lost productivity in the workforce because, you know, people come to work with problems at home. With baggage. Exactly, right? So what does that tell us? That good marriages keep us happier and healthier. And there's lots of research that can really back what I'm saying. You know, there is a, I recall there is a, uh, an article that I once read. Um, it's called the golden triangle of happiness. You can look it up, right? And it says it comes down to three things. What are the three contributors to happiness? We all want to be happy, right? And uh, it said that one of them is uh, a sense of purpose. We all want to know that there is a sense of purpose in this life, it's right? Well the second one is financial security. More money, more honey. More problems. More no, money, more problems. More money, more honey. More, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, the third one is good relationships. Okay, We all want to be in good relationships. I mean, think about it. I mean, I'm not going to ask you now, you know, remember that time you had a fight with your wife, you know, because then I don't want you to be going, your wife's going to get upset and yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to go there. But yeah. <laughs> let's say, for example, you know, someone, a friend who mm. had a, a fallout with their yeah. wife, right? Do you think they had a good day that day? Shocking it, day. Shocking, shocking day. day. Are you speaking from experience? No, like, no, no, no. no. Alhamdulillah, make dua for my marriage, make dua for everyone's Allah marriage. Allah bless your marriage. Allah wa barak, Allah hu lakum ma jadda. Anyway, How does it go again? Uh, we'll play it, inshallah. Maybe in the outro. But, jazakallah khairan. 
Thank you so much, Sheikh. Well, I feel like this is a fruitful discussion. There's so much more you want to say, Inshallah, I want to say, say, I want to ask. Future. I'm sure just leave comments below, advice, feedback, suggestions for new shows. We definitely want to have you here again because we, we love you here, Sheikh. We love you too. Jazakallah <laughs> khairan. Thank you so much. Thank you. And until Thank next you. time, happy val- Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Intabah ya kamal, huh? Be careful, huh? <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah.